In this video, we're going to look at Network Address Translation, or NAP. Let's get started. Now let's look at Network Address Translation. The basic idea here is allowing a bunch of devices to share one public IPv4 address. In this example, the devices on the subnet are using a 10 dot address. All 10 dot prefixes are considered private address space. They are not routed on the public internet. So I can have a 10 dot network and you can also have a 10 dot network, unlike public IP addresses, which must be unique throughout the entire internet. So on this local subnet, datagrams will use either source or destination addresses within this 10 dot space, depending on whether they're leaving the subnet or arriving at the subnet. So from the host perspective, this is transparent. It places its own address in the source field and the public address of the server it's connecting to in the destination field. But NAT, which acts as a middle box, actually changes some of the header fields as the packet passes through it. So on the public facing interface of this router, which is running NAT, we see that there's a public address 138.76.29.7. Every packet that passes through the router will have its source address changed from a 10 dot address to this one public address. The other thing that will happen is the NAT will go into the transport protocol layer and it will manipulate the port numbers and so that it can create a mapping based on port numbers back to the original private IP address. And so the NAT application will maintain a table of these mappings between port numbers and a private IP address port number pair. Only certain subnet prefixes can be used for private addressing. There's any address that begins with 10 dot, so that's a slash eight prefix. There's any address that begins with 172.16 making a slash 12 prefix, and any subnet within 192.168, so a slash 16 prefix. Of course, most homes don't have very many hosts, and so they might use a slash 24 within one of these larger prefixes. But none of these addresses can be routed on the public internet, so if you were to try and send a packet out into the internet to a 10 dot address, it would end up getting dropped with nowhere to go. So now your ISP can assign a single address to your entire home, and no matter how many devices you are using at the same time on the network, it only consumes one public IP address. It also means that you can reassign address blocks or even prefixes within your own home or within your own organization, and not have to notify your ISP to advertise different addresses, because your one public address on the outside of your network has not changed. So let's look a little more carefully at what NAT actually does. First, we note that NAT must be transparent. This network address translation is not part of the design of the IP protocol and is actually changing fields that are meant to remain constant from one end of a connection to another. On an outgoing datagram, meaning a datagram that is leaving the private network and going to the public internet, the private source IP address will be replaced with the public IP address of the router and the source port number will be changed to a new one that is currently unused in the NAT table. Any traffic that comes back for this client will be destined to the public IP address of the NAT router and this new port number that the router assigned to it. The NAT device will maintain a translation table so that as packets come back, it can rewrite the destination address from the public one of the router to the private one of the device that initiated the connection, and likewise change the port number back to the one that the client originally used when initiating the connection. So in incoming packets, the destination public IP address will be replaced with a private IP address, and the port number will be rewritten as well, according to the entries in the NAT translation table. Let's see an example. So we have our private subnet and our public subnet. The client sends an address out destined to a public address on port 80, so likely HTTP traffic, with its private source IP address and random high number port. The NAT device makes a new entry in its table, tracking the private address port number pair and mapping that to port 5001 on its public facing interface. So when the packet leaves the router, it now has only public addresses in its source and destination fields. When the web server replies, its address comes back to this public address, and NAT must look in its translation table and find out the correct private address and port number to swap into the fields in the packet. There's a number of issues here. One is that routers are layer 3 devices. They're not supposed to be manipulating layer 4. And another is that IPv6 has been around for decades and would easily solve the address shortage problem. So NAT is one type of middle box in that instead of only handling layer three as routers should, it changes fields in layer four, which may cause problems for applications. Imagine if somewhere in the data sent by the client, it was specifying its source port number to the server. If the server tried to use that port number for anything, it wouldn't be able to communicate with it. It also causes a problem if clients behind the router want to run their own servers, because there's no way for a client outside the NATed subnet to initiate a connection to host on a private address. Despite the controversy, NAT is extremely widely deployed 
existing in almost every residential network and many institutional networks and mobile networks as well. And that's where we'll stop for today. In our next video, we'll look at the details of IPv6 and what makes it different from IPv4. See you then. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.